Hi everyone, Will here. I wanted to make a few videos giving an introduction to several cosmological arguments. What I will be doing is giving the arguments as clearly as I can and then addressing the strongest criticisms that I have seen. Obviously I will do my very best to diffuse those objections of their power and if needed I will then summarize each controversial premise and give the reason why it is true. The simplest statement one can find of Aquinas' argument can be found in his, excuse the pronunciation, Summa Contra Gentiles. We see things in the world that can exist and can also not exist. Now everything that can exist has a cause, but one cannot go on ad infinitum in causes. Therefore one must posit something existing which is necessary. His argument can be stated as follows. 1. A contingent being exists. 2. This contingent being has a cause of his existence. 3. Either in a set of infinite contingent beings, or a set that contains at least one non-contingent or necessary being. 4. A set of infinite contingent beings cannot exist. 5. Therefore the cause of the contingent being is a set that contains at least one necessary being. 6. Therefore a necessary being exists. What I mean with contingent is a being dependent on something for its existence, e.g. cars, animals, humans. A necessary being, on the other hand, is a being that is not dependent on anything for its existence. Premise 4 claims that an actual infinite cannot exist, but this might be something hard to grasp or is something that one is reluctant to grasp. So let me tell you a quick story that will elucidate the problem of an actual infinite. Let's imagine there's a man who is writing his autobiography, but this man takes a year to record the events of one day. And so once a day passes, he has to spend another year to write down the day. So when we see this man finishing a day in his autobiography, the day he is finishing must be at least a year ago. But if said man has been writing for two years, the day he's finishing is at least two years ago. Now let's imagine this man lives for an infinite amount of time. Once we reach infinity, the days and the years he has lived are equal. They are both an infinite. So what day is said man recording? Now we could flip this story around, but then it would be even stranger. But I'm pressed on time, so I'll refrain from doing so. When we approach infinity from the mathematical point of view, we are faced with the same problem. Let's say we have a set of numbers that is actually infinite. Now let's take every odd number out, like 3, 5, 7, ad infinitum. How many numbers are left in the set? Now of course this would still be an infinite amount of numbers. Or let's say we reinsert the odd numbers back into the set. How many numbers does the set contain then? This shows that an actual infinite cannot exist. This is my favorite cosmological argument for God. Why? Because for one to criticize any of its premises requires extreme intellectual effort. So I'm very excited to see some video responses on this particular argument. In the past people would say that the universe itself is a necessary being, but we know that the universe is not eternal and therefore is contingent. How do we know this? We know this by three points. 1. An actual infinite cannot exist. 2. The second law of thermodynamics. 3. The expansion of the universe. I've already addressed 1, so let's continue on to 2. 2. The second law of thermodynamics states that everything tends towards disorder. What this implies is that if the universe had existed eternally or infinitely, that would mean that we have reached equilibrium. This means a state of maximum disorder or maximum entropy. Yet when we look out into the universe we can see that there is plenty of usable energy. So this would mean that the universe is not infinitely old. Three. 
In the same way, when we take a look at the expansion of the universe predicted by Einstein's general relativity theory and later confirmed by Edwin Hubble when he discovered the redshift, when we reverse this process backwards, we would eventually reach a point where the universe would shrink to a very small size. One thing that one must remember is that when we refer to the universe, we mean not only planets, stars and comets, etc., but we also mean the space in between. What that means is that while time progresses, space is actually stretched, just like when you draw a bunch of dots on a balloon and when you blow the balloon up, the dots recede from each other, not because they move, but because the skin of the balloon that is in between the dots stretches. The Big Bang Theory tells us that when we go back into time, this means that at one point the universe came into being. As Dr. Stephen Hawking has said in his 1996 book, The Nature of Space and Time, quote, almost everyone now believes that the universe and time itself had a beginning at the Big Bang, end quote. So now that we know that the universe itself is contingent, that implies that everything dependent on the universe is contingent as well. Now the most common way out of this problem is to impose a mother or multi-universe, which seems to me to be an extreme leap of faith because we have absolutely no evidence that such a multiverse exists. There are also other objections that could be raised against this objection, but those will come later. Let's take a look at the next cosmological argument, 